Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Art Center's new series, World Art. Each class will be going to a different location around the world and studying the art, and in this case, the architecture. That's the art of building a building of different countries. Today, our travels take us to England to study the castles of England. Let's take a look at what I've done here. So we kind of have, here's my drawing that I did for us to be uh, inspired by today. But I'm going to show you some pictures in a little bit of other ways of drawing castles. So please remember that you can really, I mean, I put a dragon in mind. Your imagination can run wild with this. Let's take a look at some of the castles that actually exist in England. Now, castles were important because they defended the royal family, they defended important people. So they were built as fortresses. They often had towers. Now those towers could be round or square. And you'll notice the up, down, up, down little uh, tops of them. Those are so that the archers would have a slot to fire their arrows through, but then would have something to, for them to stand behind and be protected. So they also came with a moat that went around and circled the castle. And many times they had these beautiful gardens. They often put them on a hillside because a hill is an easier type of position to defend. So did we see where our country of England is? Let's see where our country of England is. You can see it's this island, it's near France, it's the one in red. So that's called the United Kingdom. It also includes the countries of Wales and Scotland. So you can tell castles are, are big structures, but they're not that much fun to live in. They're very cold especially in cold climates like they have in England. That's why there's tapestries everywhere to help keep the building a little bit warmer. Now, you may say to me, Donna, there is no way that I'm going to learn how to draw a castle. But look, I'm going to show you some examples. Here's the simplest type of castle you can draw. It's got squares and triangles. I know you can draw squares and triangles. And then if you want to get a little fancier, Here's a little one that's a little bit fancier. And you can tell it has some more detail to it. It's got a few more, you know, windows. It's got the cone tops. So that's a little bit next level. And then if you want to go a little bit more, this one has these types of structures that they've added to the side. You can see that this is a little bit more resolved as a gate. And then, of course, if you really like castles and you want to go really complicated, you can see we've got all these towers here. You can imagine what the inside of the building might look like if you were walking around. So let's take a look at the drawing we're going to be doing today. All right. Now, as with all of the landscapes that we've drawn, the first line is the most important line, and it's the horizon line. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to put my horizon line in. Maybe it's some high mountains for the first part of it. And then just to make things a little easier for me, I'm going to make the mountain that the castle is on now so that I can kind of play on the rest of my landscape. So I'm going to put my mountain here. It's kind of flat for the castle to go on. Then it kind of comes off this way. And I'm going to make it kind of round here because there's going to be a moat going around it. And my moat it's just like a half circle, it's like a smile. It goes around my castle like that. So here's the hill that my castle is on, and there's the moat that goes around my castle. Now I'm gonna draw the simplest version of the castle for you guys, and as you remember, it started with a square like this, and then it has two rectangles that come up either side like this. This is for the towers. Now, after I get that done, I have to put the up, down, up, down, up, down guys in here. And then it comes down like this. I'm going to make this line a little darker so you can see. Now here, I need up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then I'm going to do the same thing up here. Up, down, up, down, up. So now you can see I have my two towers. Line across the bottom. And I'm going to make this a little bit further in because that's set back a little bit. Here's my door. Here's my path. Now watch what happens to my path as I get near the moat. It starts off skinny, but it gets really fat. That tells me that this is far away and this is closer to me. Here is the bridge that gets me across the moat. 
Now I can go back and I can adjust my landscape a little bit. I'm going to put in a line here. And these are the fields that surround our castle. And these are the forest, like Sherwood Forest. So I can just make this squiggly line. And this looks like a line of trees that separates the fields from the mountains. Now in my drawing, I have another road coming in. Comes in from here, kind of comes around. And again, small because it's far away, gets fatter as it comes close. So in our imaginations, we could travel down this way and go right on up this way. Now I'm going to put some windows in my castle. I could make square ones. And after we're done with this, I'm going to show you another way of doing round towers. Put some windows in here. Put the wood that's on there. And then I can put some trees here. You know, castles often had their own sources of food and would have gardens and grain fields and orchards where they grew fruit right on the premises of where the castle was. That way you didn't have to go out to try to find your groceries. All right, so here's just a real basic... Okay, you probably want to see the dragon, though, don't you? All right, I'll show you how to draw the dragon. This is a serpentine dragon, so it starts off really easy. Just a serpentine line, like that, like waves. I'm going to put his tail over here, and his tail is skinny, and as it gets to his body, he gets fatter, and when it gets to his neck, it gets skinnier again. Now I'm going to give him a squarish, dragons have kind of squarish heads, I'm going to make him smiling. Give him the nose, here's his eye, and I'm going to give him his ear. And then they got that cool little thing that goes down their back. Of course, I've never met a dragon. I'm just going on what I've been told. Now we need legs. Here's his legs, little elbow, claw, claw, claw. Little arm, claw, claw, claw. Now remember what I said about animals. They have a backward knee. So I do this kind of backward too to give him his backward knee. Let's give him his other leg. But of course, where are the wings? Here they come. Wing number one. Do -do -do. Do -do -do -do, like bat wings. So this is kind of like a bat wing. And then we're just going to put the second one behind it like that. So it's just like a wiggle worm. Look, just like a wiggle worm. That's all it is. I want to show you one more thing, though, before we, I show you something else. Now look. Here's our step-by-step. -step. I drew my square first. Then I just put a two rectangles. I put two rectangles on either side of my square. And then I just cleaned it up like what we just did. But in the event you want round towers like they have in those princess movies, then you just make this line round and you put an upside down ice cream cone on the top. So you're just changing it a little bit. You're giving it a round tower instead. And here I drew a fancier one, just having the towers. I've seen towers come out like that from time to time. The country of Austria has many, many castles. Well, shall I show you what it looks like if we're lucky enough to have watercolor? Okay, so I painted my landscape. I want you to notice that there's more than one color of green because I need my trees to be a different color green than my grass. And you know, not all grass is the same. So here's this, but here's this completely different color of grass. And embrace your brush strokes. It shows that a human made it. They're fun. You can have fun with your brush strokes. So this is the way that I paint it. I use magic marker to outline it, and then I just went in with my paint after that. So I'm exhausted. We flew all the way to England today. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, if you make any of these works of art and you want to share them with us, just message them on Facebook, and we'll post them on Instagram for you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you for a new country next time.